when you go for a symposium that talks about whiskey the first guy talks about blended scotch whiskey the second one talks about single malt and when the third one comes he says leave those whiskies in the bottle and i am going to put it in the glass and mix it either with water or with ice to make it balanced by the same token for an insulin symposium we had the first generation basal insulins we have the second generation basal insulins with the other speaker now i don't have a third generation to talk about but i have the soda water or the ice to tell you how we can mix this insulin and give you something balanced the unmet needs with complex regimens in type 2 diabetes management despite evolution of many glucose lowering therapies some of which you heard just now glycemic control remains sub optimal for many patients with diabetes remember complex insulin regimens are associated with multiple injections reduced flexibility risk of hypoglycemia and weight gain and factors impacting the potential treatment burden of complex treatment regimens is lifestyle adjustments again the multiple daily injections diet and physical activity of course we know we live in an environment which with the behavior and the lifestyle we just need to change we just had a break and if you saw how well diacare con served us we'd be pretty much like this if we admitted and saw more conscious diets so the global guideline recommendations on combination injectable ada 2024 says the combination of basal insulin with glp1 ra has potent glucose lowering action and less weight gain and hypoglycemia compared with the intensified insulin plans as and as 2020 says failure of oads or even glp1 ras if glycemic targets are not achieved with therapies basal insulin should be added alone or as a basal insulin glp1 ra combination injection Although premixed insulin requires fewer injections it also has less flexibility for dosing adjustments and may definitely will increase hypoglycemia ESD ADA 2022 says the combination of basal insulin with GLP-1 RA results in greater glycemic lowering efficacy than the mono components with less weight gain and lower rates of hypoglycemia than with intensified insulin regimens and have better gastrointestinal tolerability than with the glp1 ra alone what is a combination injectable two titratable drugs basal insulin and glp1 ra combined in a single injection is called a combination an iglar lixi is a combination injectable of insulin glar gene u100 plus lixi center an iglar lixi is approved in india for the treatment of adult patients with obesity with insufficiently controlled type 2 diabetes to improve glucose control as an adjunct to diet exercise metformin with or without gls uh, sglt tools even when this has not been provided by metformin alone or metformin combined with other oads or even with basal insulin or with glp1 ra remember this is a complicated statement but everything which comes from government of india there are so many addendums prepositions and punctuations that you have to understand but you still struggle to grow you want to keep trying pushing insulin you want to get 
HbA1c, but you don't want hypoglycemia, but you don't want weight gain. So, iglarlixine targets seven out of the eight pathophysiological abnormalities of type 2 diabetes. It reduces hepatic glucose production and reduces gluconeogenesis. It increases glucose uptake in the muscles, decreases lipolysis through its insulin action. And through the GLP-1 RA, lixisenatide, it increases glucose-dependent insulin release. It reduces glucose-dependent glucagon release. It increases satiety and it slows gastric emptying. So seven out of the eight ominous octets. Complementary modes of action of basal insulin glargine U100 plus brandial GLP-1 lixisinotide provides a rationale for the combination. Effective A1C reduction, fasting PP glucose control addresses multiple pathophysiologic defects. More people achieve glycemic targets. Once a day dosing, weight benefits or weight neutrality versus intensified insulin regime, lower rates or even no additional risk of hypoglycemia versus insulin intensified regimes, and improved GI tolerability versus the normal components. So let's piece this puzzle together. How are we going to make the two get together? Let's look at the iglar lixi evidence. There's plenty of evidence in adults with type 2 diabetes. The soli D, the soli mix, phase 3 trial, real world evidence, and a systematic review and meta-analysis. So let me take you through a few of the studies. iglar lixi in type 2 diabetes suboptimally controlled on OADs, and you compare the iglar lixi versus idec asp Everybody knows idec asp is a mixture of same third generation insulin with a fast asp So iglar lixi versus idec asp efficacy and safety was seen in the soli D. Soli stands for soli qua and D for the degludec randomized control trial. And they saw that in this population of type 2 diabetes, more than three months stable on metformin plus a second OAD, any one of the variety, with BME, with BMI less than 40, A1C more than 7.5 or less than 11, or more than 7 and less than 10, depending on the OAD, iglarlic C once daily, along with the OAD, with IDEC as once daily, followed up every three days, translated to week 24. It showed non-inferiority in A1C change from baseline. And what were the real endpoints? The key secondary efficacy endpoints was superiority in change of A1C from baseline to week 24, superiority in change in body weight from baseline to 24, proportion of participants to reach A1C at week 24 of less than 7, and proportion of participants reaching A1C less than 7 without body weight gain and with less hypoglycemia. The other secondary efficacies was 7 point SMPG, change in FPG, proportion of participants reaching targets with hypoglycemia being hardly any, and total insulin dose in each group. Safety endpoints were, of course, the different levels of hypoglycemia and other adverse events. The baseline characteristics were similar, age, sex distribution, BMI, duration of type 2 diabetes, A1C, and additional OADs. It showed non-inferiority and actually superiority over IDEC as in A1C reduction. This is the solid E study. The purple is the I is the uh, iglar lixi, and the brown or the beige is the one with IDEC as. 
greater proportion of patients treated with iglarlic C achieved A1C of less than 7 without body weight gain and less than 7 without body weight gain and no hypoglycemia as compared to IDEC ASP as is seen in the primary and in the secondary PNRs. Again, if you see it showed a reduction in 7 point SMPG values, the solid E study with change in PPG from baseline to V24 and the difference was very significant in the two groups. The amount of insulin used. See, I glarlic C28.2, I dig as 34. Why are we calculating amount of insulin? One is the cost, more insulin. Two, more the insulin, more the weight gain. So everything pinches, one the pocket, the other the weighing scale. Lower incidence and event rate of hypoglycemia, including nocturnal hypoglycemia, where between bedtime and waking was lower with iglarlic C versus idec as 2.8% versus 5.8%, more than double, and looked at everything, any hypo, ADA level 1, level 2, and again, event rates. The summary and conclusion of the solid e study that iglarlic C should be considered as a valuable option for advancing therapy in patients with type 2 diabetes suboptimally controlled on OADs because it has a superior body weight, more patients achieving lesser hypoglycemia, no unexpected safety findings with not only non-inferiority but statistical superiority in A1C reduction. One more study Iglarlic C versus the individual monocomponents. Iglarlic C versus Glargine 100 and Iglarlic C versus Lixisinotide. And what did we find here? That Iglarlic C complements Iglar and Lixisinotide effects to achieve meaningful A1C reduction, almost close to near normal glycemia without increase in either hypoglycemia or weight compared with IGLAR alone and has low gastrointestinal adverse effects as compared to lixisinotide alone. So A1C, FPG, PPG, 7 point, target A1C and weight, everything was covered. I'll show you the last evidence, which is IGLAR lixi in type 2 diabetes, suboptimally controlled on basal insulin, what did they do? They gave Iglar Lixi to one of them and they gave B asp 30 twice a day to the other group. Similar population, once a day Iglar Lixi, twice a day B asp 30. And what did we find? Again, Iglar Lixi was non inferior to B asp in the change of A1C and was superior in the form of body weight from baseline. So, subsequent hierarchical testing showed A1C reductions were in fact superior with iglar lixi as compared to BS30. And the composite target achievement was significantly greater with iglar lixi with smaller mean daily insulin dose. This is called the Solimix study, the secondary endpoint, the total insulin daily dose. And what about hypoglycemia? The Solimix study was very clear. Incidence of hypoglycemia, nocturnal, any time, all of them significantly less with iglar lixi versus BS30. So the efficacy and the summary and conclusion was better glycemic control with weight benefit, less hypo, fewer daily injections, Similar proportions of SAEs in both groups, iglar lixi is an efficacious, simpler, well-tolerated alternative to pre-mix pre BS in uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. What about the iglar lixi pen? This is something which is an innovator's checklist. 
how wonderfully it has been made. This pen has glargine and lixisinotype in a ratio of two is to one, two units to one microgram. It's a three ml three pill pen with 300 units of insulin glargine, 100 and 150 of lixisinotype micrograms and that you go up on the doses. When you give a click, you get 10. When you go up, you can keep going up. The 10 and the 40 is for the large. The weekly dose adjustment is based on the median fasting SMTG for the last few days. Whether it's insulin naive, patients who have been on insulin glargine of less than 20 units or more than 20, you can see how you can start the doses and you can see how this yellow pen, one click, 10 units. How do you start? It should be injected subcutaneously once a day within one hour prior to the meal. You can give it before breakfast or before lunch. And it is preferable that the brandial injection is performed before the same meal every day. This is important because in India, we are able to fix our thing first, as per what Dr. Bandari said. And you can even try and fix the post-lunch as per what Dr. Atak said. But when it comes to real post-lunch, that is the challenge, post brandial So this is where you get lixisinotype. In case you miss a dose, it should be injected within the hour prior to the next meal. Weekly dose adjustments are based on median SMTG for the last few days. What about in special populations? Can we use in elderly patients? As far as Iglar Lixi, Lixi Sinotide, no dose adjustment is required as per age. Renal impairment, mild to moderate, you can use. Iglar Lixi, not recommended with severe impairment and creatinine clearance of less than 30 or ESRD. Hepatic, no problem. Iglar Lixi can be used in even severe hepatic impairment. Pregnancy, we still need more data. So you have to be careful using it in pregnancy. One injection, once daily, within one hour before the major meal or any one meal, you can deliver two drugs. You've given the whiskey, you've given the avian, you've given everything that you wanted. The combination injectable Iglar Lixi is a synergistic combination in 100 units large G with GLP-1 RA effectively looks after fasting and postprandial. The tests and the trials solidly indicates it is well tolerated, better glycemic control with added body weight benefit and lower risk of hypoglycemia. Solimix shows that it is efficacious, simpler, again, better glycemic control, weight benefit, and less hypoglycemia as compared to the twice daily DS. Remember, here you have your cake and you eat it too, so the patient gets both benefits rolled into one injection. I've kept my time.